Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today we're going to talk about what I call the trifecta of FUD. And I've been getting nothing but uh, emails and uh, tweets and different DMs about this issue or these issues that are coming about all in one day. And it could be a pretty big reason why, why we've seen like a 10% a drop in just Bitcoin alone. So we're going to go over all three of these things and I'm going to tell you why they're ridiculous. And then we're going to get to a fourth thing that really not too many people are talking about, which I think is the scariest thing out of all of them. So just stay to the end. So first up, we're going to talk about Bitcoin falls 11% after report suggests a critical flaw in the crypto called double spend may have occurred. And uh, when we really dig into this article and talk about what's going on. It just is a uh, basic ridiculousness. And in my personal opinion, I think this is just FUD throwing around so people can buy up some cheap Bitcoin, some cheap cryptocurrency, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. On top of that, let's talk about Craig Wright, who has been resurrected. Guy was gone for quite some time, didn't hear anything about him. And all of a sudden he wants to come back and say, hey, the uh, Satoshi Nakamoto white paper for Bitcoin, that's all me, which he had we had talked about that you know months and months ago. But now he's going about and enforcing it. We're going to talk about why that is, rid this is ridiculous and what does even matter. And then finally, we're going to take a look at Janet Yellen, the nominee for uh, Treasury, and what she said recently about cryptocurrency, which everybody is flipping out about. But if we go into the nuance pieces, we're going to take a look at what she really said drilling down. So we'll go over all these three things, plus a bonus scary thing that's going on. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. But let's quickly go over the market. However, excuse me, before we do that, I want to say thanks to my sponsors over there at CryptoTrader.tax. CryptoTrader.tax, if you don't know, it's a very easy way to uh, plug in via API to any different exchange you've ever used uh, to realize potential losses and gains. Now, I use this myself. This will be the second year I've actually used it. I used it last year. The time that I actually set it up, got everything in there, figured out what I was doing, and sent it off to my account, 30 minutes. Got everything done, saved a lot of time, saved a lot of money, and uh, that is why I'm happy that they are one of my sponsors. So right now, if you go to this site, which I will link in the description below, you can put your first name, last name, well, actually first name and email, and you can enter to win for an unlimited use of cryptocurrency tax report or an unlimited uh, tax report. So I will link that at the very end. Also, uh, just so you know, uh, the IRS really wants to start to enforce everything. And I think with all the money printing that is going around, they probably want to dig into your money, which we'll talk about in a bit. So let's take a look at what is going on with that. And here we go. Oh, one more thing. Uh, for every one of my videos in the description, you can find that link for the win the free tax report right here. Just click on that. There's also a coupon code, 20% off for all Dan users. And then there's also an explainer video, which I made for CryptoTrader.tax. You can click on that right there. All right, so let's get into today's uh, top story as soon as we take a look at the market real quick. So we're looking at Bitcoin. Uh, was at 41, now it's at 31. ETH, US, uh, US ETH, no one cares. Dot's a little bit up, amazingly, but everything's down. Down, 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 down. Everything's a big red day. So why is that? Well, let's start off with this. So this is from BitMEX. BitMEX, if you don't remember, uh, they were hauled into court by the U.S. government because they were doing some odd things, we will say, as far as signing up people and allowing them leverage trading and a lot of different shenanigans. And it just got shut down. So uh, Arthur Hayes is, a, I don't know what happened to that guy. And uh, we are just, you know, sitting out here in the wind. And here comes a report from BitMEX saying, hey, there's a double spend. What is double spend, first of all? Let me explain it. That was the whole thing with cryptocurrency, especially with Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto says, well, before even Bitcoin was around, there was other digital type of cash, digi-cash and stuff like that. And what they couldn't really solve was how do you make people not spend doubly or double spend when you're actually trying to purchase things? So the way that they did that is that there wouldn't be just one centralized ledger. They would have a decentralized ledger so no one could fool the system. And now with Bitcoin having 10,000 plus nodes all throughout the globe, and that's what the whole thing is with the blockchain, is that when somebody spends something, or actually transfers their cryptocurrency, it goes to all the different nodes and all the different blockchains, and it is cryptographically put into that blockchain for Bitcoin, for all records and everyone to see, and you cannot change it. So there is no double spend. There has been no double spend uh, since the inception of Bitcoin. I think maybe there was, now I, 
there, there was nothing uh, beforehand. There was some type of uh, instance uh, that happened uh, with uh, when they were doing testing or something, but in the very beginning, it doesn't matter. So for over a decade, no double spend, no issues, right? Now all of a sudden, BitMEX comes out and says, hey, we just had a double spend. So what the heck is going on? So real quick, let's scroll through this whole article because it's kind of boring. But it says here, BitMEX research tweeted that it appears as if a small double spend amount of 0 0.000620 or $21 was detected. BitMEX later said it appeared that the double spend was actually an RBF transaction, which is when an unconfirmed Bitcoin transaction is replaced with a new transfer paying a higher fee. It's not really a double spend, but there is an instance with higher fees. But BitMEX's fork monitor said that no RBF fee bumps have been detected. Have been detected. So they sent out a tweet and they say, look, there's a problem with uh, what's going on with Bitcoin. There's been a double spend. Then later on, they say, oh, you know what? It was an RBF. And then the monitors come out and says, you know what? Uh, there was no RBF detected. So you have to wonder, you have to ask yourself, well, what's going on here? Why does this happen right now? Well, it's just one of the trifecta of FUD because uh, for over a decade, this hasn't been an issue. But now when you start to hear about, oh, there's been a double spend, that shakes the confidence of especially newer people and even people who have been in the game for quite some time, like, oh, well, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe something's going on. But that's not the case. That's not the case. And this is what uh, we talk about here. So we can go for forward. Then next, had another tweet, a transaction in the losing chain sent blah, blah, blah to the address, blah, blah, blah. And a transaction in the winning chain, which spent the same inputs only sent to this address. If a double spend did in fact occur, sounds like it didn't, it could be a fatal blow to the popular cryptocurrency, which it won't. So again, if you start hearing about double spends and, and you know it's, it's, it's faulty for the blockchain, this is not the case. This is what is going on. It's just a very odd thing that uh, BitMEX goes through all these different, th different problems. Then all of a sudden they, they come to the report, oh, there's a double spend. And then all of a sudden people freak out and the price goes way lower. You think that a lot of people aren't accumulating? I will just tell you this, I bought some, and it was a pretty good day for me as far as dollar cost average. All right, let me know what you think in the comments section, and let's move on to our next piece. So, next up, Craig Wright. Craig Wright, if you don't know, he is the uh, patriarch <laughs> of Bitcoin SV. So you have Roger Vera for Bitcoin Cash, you have uh, Craig Wright for Bitcoin SV, Satoshi's vision, as they call it, and uh, again, I don't see the point of it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay, lay aside my biases as best I can. But just so you know, I am biased. And when I report on these things, I'm definitely biased. And uh, when I hear about these things, about copyright infringement, things like that, I'm like, what is really going on here? So this article states, well, it's a quote from, we will continue hosting the Bitcoin white paper and won't be silenced or intimidated. Others hosting the white paper should follow our lead in resisting these false allegations. So said Bitcoin.org, an independent open source project that aims to support Bitcoin development in a response on Thursday to an attempt by N-Chain chief scientist Craig Wright to force the site to take down its copy of the Bitcoin white paper. So if you haven't been around or just, are you new to this, the thing is, is well, what happened here? Well, Craig Wright, he went to the copyright division and said, look, this white paper belongs to me. And when you have to register copyright, first you have to prove in some way that you owned this, this copyright. And if no one else is around who can really prove anything, then you, you go through paperwork, you go through a process, and they say, okay, well, we're gonna award it to you. Now, does that mean that the copyright, that the US Copyright Department does everything that, that they have to do to look at all cryptography and look through all the different court cases and say, yes, this guy definitely was, was the first one. They didn't do that. So they just awarded it to him on a provisional basis, and here we are. And Craig Wright is going all over the place going, you know what? Take it down, take it down, take it down. But here's the thing. There's been a bunch of different wallets uh, that could potentially be linked to Satoshi Nakamoto. And they said, well, if you own the wallets, then why don't you transfer any of that uh, Bitcoin to another wallet. And of course, to this date, and it's been quite some time, Craig Wright has not been able to do that. Until he does that, then I will say, yes, he's Toshi Nakamoto. But I'm going to ask you the question, does it really matter? I'll get to that in a second. However, the operators of BitcoinCore.org, the website for the crypto's developer team, Bitcoin Core, did take down their copy of the paper. References to it deleted and the changes merged on GitHub, according to Bitcoin.org. 
By surrendering it in this way, the Bitcoin Core project has lent ammunition to Bitcoin's enemies, engaged in self-censorship, and compromised its integrity, said the organization. The organization said the Bitcoin white paper was included in the original Bitcoin project files. The project was published under the permissive and free MIT license by Satoshi Nakamoto. Let me say that again. The organization said the Bitcoin white paper was included in the original Bitcoin project files, and the project was published under the permissive and free MIT license by Satoshi Nakamoto. So Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he, she, they are, wanted this to be out in the open as much as possible, and it wasn't, didn't belong to any one person, and it was open source. So it's a very odd thing that now all of a sudden that the potential Satoshi Nakamoto is like, nope, it's all mine, give it back and take it all down. It's just amazing how those things uh, change, if that is really the case. As such, Bitcoin.org said, there is no doubt it has the legal right to host the white paper. Furthermore, Satoshi Nakamoto has a known PGP public key, therefore it is cryptographically possible for someone to verify themselves to be Satoshi Nakamoto. Unfortunately, Craig has been able to do this, the post ads. So also remember this before we get uh, going. Satoshi Nakamoto, <laughs> Satoshi Nakamoto, look, I'm already getting confused. Craig Wright has already gone through court cases uh, to prove this. He's been taken to court uh, by multiple people. And really all he had to do to prove it was just to use that public key and to transfer a little bit of Bitcoin around. And he could not do uh, that aspect. Also, uh, when he put in paperwork to the uh, judge to prove that he was Toshi Nakamoto, a uh, couple of those uh, addresses and wallets that he had put into it, they said, yes, this is mine. This is the one that Satoshi uses. Uh, the next day, or it was a week later, uh, someone actually opened that one up and transferred it and then put a memo and said, Craig Wright is a liar. This is not Satoshi's wallet. This is my wallet. And you can verify it right now. So, so then, then, of course, some people said, oh, so Craig Wright just playing 3D chess and he did that himself. I'm like, no. So that is what is going on. But let me just ask you this question, which is this. If Craig Wright, first of all, did come out and said, I am Satoshi Nakamoto. I am the person that invented all these things, all, all Bitcoin. Everything that has to do with Bitcoin, it's all me. Me, me, me. So now you have a centralized person that governments can attack. They can look at them and go, you are the cause of all this illicit activity and you need to regulate it and you need to do something about it. It's the same thing that happened with, we'll just say, Silk Road when they uncovered or amassed uh, one of the uh, founders, the Dread Pirate Roberts. Unfortunately, I don't think that was even the, the right guy. I don't want to even get in that debate about who that really is or whatever else, but the whole thing was this, is that they pegged it on a person, one person, and said, you are the one that is responsible for everything, and we're going to peg everything on you. And since you own it, you need to shut it down. So in my personal opinion, I think it's the greatest thing of all time that if Satoshi Nakamoto is still alive, first of all, and he, she, they knows exactly what's going on, it's the best thing that they never show up. And I would think that as smart as Craig Wright is, he would realize that even if he was or was not. I'm not here to debate that. I just don't see the point of someone coming and going, it's me. Well, if it is you, then just move some Bitcoin around. That's all you got to do. It's very simple. And uh, that's what we got. Now, some people will say, but Rob, you don't understand, because if he is Satoshi Nakamoto, then he can move all that Bitcoin around, and there's like a million uh, of, uh, of Bitcoin that, would, that Craig Wright would, uh, would have in his possession, and he could crash the market. First of all, if that really did happen, who cares? Do you think that he'd really want to crash the market if he had that much Bitcoin? Heck, Grayscale and the rest of those, Grayscale itself has like uh, 500,000. Of course, it's the different investors and whatnot. But then people will say, but he's the, he's the one that created it. And if he can create it, he can destroy it and everything else. I'm like, really? Is that the truth? Does it really matter who really created it and where it, got, where it, come, where it goes in the future? You have no farther than, than to look at the, the uh, McDonald's story. There's a great video. Check it out on Netflix. You haven't seen it already. It's called The Founder. McDonald's, I'm sure most of you know what that is. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, McDonald's was started by the McDonald's brothers in San Bernardino, California. And then this guy, Ray Kroc, came along, and he was just a salesman, a shake salesman, I think. And he said, hey, you know what? This looks like a pretty good, can I, you know, branch off? Can I fork the McDonald's <laughs> and set it up where I live? Sure, go ahead and do that. And he did that so well, 
and he did everything as far as McDonald's, and he grew it so much that he shut down the, the, the McDonald's brothers, and he became McDonald's. So it doesn't matter who starts it. Really, it means who grows it, who brings it to the public, and what does it actually mean for everybody? And uh, I don't care. I don't care who started Bitcoin. It's it's too big for just any one person, anyhow. That is just my theory. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. All right. So, last up for the <laughs> the trifecta of uh, Janet Yellen. So Janet Yellen, uh, she. She was the head of the Federal Reserve from 2014 to 2018, I believe it was, or 2012 to 2016, one of those two. I was getting confused. But uh, now she is the, um, the nominee for the uh, Treasury. And she stood up uh, during her uh, commencement or during her hearing and said, hey, we need to really take a look at uh, cryptocurrency because they're used for illicit activity. And when I read this, I'm like, okay, well, everybody else and their mother said the same thing, so I, I, whatever. The people were really flipping out about this, like, oh, no, because this person's going to bring everything down. She's not going to bring it down. So, again, we have to take a look at the details. The devil is always in the details. Isn't that how it works? So, this was an, a follow-up article from Coindesk, and they said Janet Yellen offers Senate a more nuanced take on crypto. And this is what was actually said. The Treasury Secretary nominee said that while cryptocurrencies can be used to finance terrorism and other illicit activities, that's what everybody talked about. She's going to shut it down because of all these illicit activities. They also have the potential to improve the efficiency of the financial system in a written response to the Senate Finance Committee. She quotes, or is quoted as saying, I think we need to look closely at how to encourage their use for legitimate activities while curtailing their use for malign and illegal activities. Great. So she wants to use it, but she doesn't want it to be used for legal activities. That seems pretty reasonable, I think, right? I mean, uh, we have anti-money laundering in KYC because of the dollar, which is being used uh, so uh, prevalently uh, for all these different illegal activities, like with the cartel and with terrorism, all the big bad things that are out there. So yes, that is what is used. Dollars aren't evil, but they're used by evil people. Bitcoin's not evil, but it's used by evil people. And of course, if you can regulate as little as you can, then that's good. Again, people always say, ah, Rob, you're so big on regulation. You should be not, not to be so much in regulation. Look, regulation's like cake. A slice of cake's okay, but the whole cake will kill you. So just remember that a little bit of regulation goes a long way. Now, hopefully, it'll be hands off. And of course, you're welcome to say what you ever want in the comment section. <laughs> I'm sure you'll have a lot of opinions. But uh, I just think a little bit uh, would go a long way. And of course, there's always a happy medium, just got to find it. If confirmed, I, she states, I intend to work closely with the Federal Reserve Board and the other federal banking and securities regulators on how to implement an effective regulatory framework for these and other fintech innovations, which is great news. She wants to work with her people. Whether you agree with that she's actually going to do it or not is, is, is up to you. But I will just say this. We talked about this today in the first video. See this guy right here? I was saying this guy gave a great... Uh, presentation on blockchain money. He talked about Bitcoin, Ripple, XRP, and everything else. Very knowledgeable guy. I was like, who's this guy? You know who that guy is? That's Gensler. And Gensler here, well, I was his first name, Gary Gensler, he is the pick to head the SEC. So at least, at the very minimum, this guy knows cryptocurrency digital assets quite well to give a presentation at MIT. So that's pretty good. I will take that guy. And on top of that, uh, the OCC, looks like they may ta tap uh, a former Ripple board advisory member, not a board member, but an advisory member uh, to uh, Ripple. And his name is uh, Barr. I forgot his first name, but yeah. Michael Barr. Michael Barr, former U.S. Treasury Department official and Ripple member. So great. So now we got two guys in there that know a lot about cryptocurrency digital assets, which could help, I believe, uh, Janet here, to distinguish about what really should be done. So hopefully it all uh, work itself out through dialogue and a little compromise. But that is what is going on right now for the trifecta of FUD. So hopefully I explained it pretty well. But I will end up with this. There is a fourth dark horse, and I think this one is even, 
more dangerous than the other three that we just talked about right now. This one is really bad. So let's break into it. In that committee, Janet Yellen gave a lot of statements. And depending on what you think she's actually going to do, this is one of the statements that came about. I'll read this, this first one yellow first. Yellen, nominated by U.S. President-elect Joe Biden to head the Treasury, said she would consider a proposal to boost government revenues. The, the remark was made during her confirmation hearing on Tuesday and raised eyebrows among some senators and Wall Street investors, according to the news report. And what she said is that she would consider, that's right here, she would consider taxing unrealized capital gains. Why is that so dangerous? Why is that such a, a bad uh, piece of, of information? Well, unrealized, not realized, unrealized capital gains refers to the theoretical increase in value of assets that an investor holds on to. The gains are only realized when the investor sells the asset at a price higher than what was initially paid to buy it. So right now, I believe that Maybe you, maybe a lot of you, are sitting on a lot of unrealized capital gains. Maybe you took my advice, not financial advice, but this is what I did, uh, and bought up some Voyager when I recommended it at 29 cents and I went to a dollar. So right there you've got some, and if you didn't sell it, that, that is unrealized capital gains. So usually you get taxed on that when you sell it, and those are called realized tax uh, capital gains. But everything in your portfolio, whether that be Bitcoin, whether that be Voyager, whether that be Cardano, whether it be Ethereum or Tomato Coin or whatever else you got, or any kind of stock that you have, or any kind of artwork that is hanging in your house that has appreciated, those are all unrealized capital gains. So what does that mean? That means that the government can say, tell us everything that you have, and we're going to tax you on it. It doesn't matter if you sold it or not. Hopefully you got some money. So... If you just happen to, you know, come across a Monet painting or something very nice, a Picasso, and, uh, you know, some crazy, you know, uh, yard sale, and you say, oh, look, it's a Picasso, and uh, you buy it for five bucks and it's worth $20 million. Well, you own the government a lot because they're unrealized capital gains. It's in your possession, and they're going to say, well, give us our money. Well, I don't have the money because I haven't sold it. Well, too bad because we passed it, and that is what is going on. So this was... One comment made in a litany of comments uh, that was done before uh, the House. And I think if this comes through, this could really destroy everything. Because it wouldn't just destroy that small piece of cryptocurrency. It would also destroy any kind of investment, any kind of ideal to start a small business, Anybody who wants to do an IPO, anybody, just any investor, like you wouldn't want to be an investor. Like, well, this is stupid. Why would I do this? And uh, I don't know why this would ever go through. I would hope that with Yellen sitting down with uh, people like a Gensler, like a bar, like people in her office, and they would say, this is a really bad idea. If you want to tax somebody, then you can tax them. And like Char I was watching Charles Hoskinson's live, live AMA and he said, look, we can have a debate about where those levels are. Is it 36%? Is it 38%? Is it 42%? You know, how much are you going to tax somebody? Is it, is it 18%? You can have that discussion. And that's for, you know, Congress and Senate or Congress to just to really, you know, uh, wash through. But if you're going to sit here and go, you know what, we're going to tax every unrealized capital gain, that is never going to happen. It is never going to be good. And this was a quick article. Oak Trees, Howard Marks, pretty much just said, he's a, of course he's a billionaire. He doesn't want to get, he doesn't want to get taxed on that. Uh, he's like, that's a very dumb, that's a very dumb thing. So again, uh, I don't see how this could possibly go through, but this is just one comment that she made. This isn't even been uh, put forth into uh, any part of a uh, of the legislation department who actually passes a bill. It's just something that uh, she was said is that she would consider it. So I'm going to take a cue from Charles there and say, if you have the time and you really think that this is a very bad thing, such as myself, write your congressman, write your senator and say, if you do this, 
This will destroy businesses, this will destroy investors, and this will destroy the fabric of our country if you move this forward. I will be doing the same thing. And uh, that is what we got. So as a reminder, again, thanks for the trader tax for <laughs> making it uh, actually easy to and actually save on our taxes. Uh, go ahead and take a look at that in the description below. And that is it for today. So hopefully that helps out, kind of eases some of your fears. Again, with, with the yelling, remember, it's just a comment. It's a comment. And I think it's, a, I mean, how many of us have made some stupid comment? And I don't think that uh, once she talks to people that really can hash it out, how would that really go through? That would destroy everything. But, uh, you know, it is one of those things. Be proactive instead of reactive. Write to your congressman, write to your senator, and take action. All right, so thanks for watching. It's really pretty, it's a little long, but uh, a lot of information out there. And I just appreciate you guys uh, just uh, sticking with me to the very end. So thanks so much. And uh, I will still be doing those exit strategies for all, everything in my portfolio, that 80-20P rule. And I uh, will get that out tonight uh, as soon as possible. So thanks so much. See you on the next one.